Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we're going to be discussing the topic of whether or not the Jaguars should have urgency in extending Trevor Lawrence this offseason. And so before we jump into this, I do want to apologize. Um, I'm a little congested this morning. I still want to get this video out for you guys, of course, um, so my voice will probably sound a little weird and all that, but we're still going to have some good content here. Um, so what we're really talking about is the, the sense of urgency around this. Is this something that has to take place this off season? It, is there repercussions if it happens in, say, 2025 or even later than that? And so that's what we want to hit on. We want to evaluate whether he's earned a contract extension for one. I'll just give you my thoughts on that. And we also want to evaluate if there's quarterbacks coming up here soon that could reset the market, because that is an incredibly important factor in all of this. So we're going to jump in first by just kind of looking at performance over the last couple of years. And so you start with 2022. I've got pulled up on PFF here. And if you follow the Jaguars in 2022, which almost all of you did, I'm sure, um, he was really good. In the last half of the year. The start, there were some question marks. Wasn't the best performances. But you can see he went a long amount of time without throwing a pick. Was really taking care of the ball well. Only threw a couple of interceptions late in the year. And then you have the playoff game, of course, where things just went terrible for the first half, most of it. But he threw four touchdowns. He came back in that game. And so you saw a lot of great things out of him because you saw that production on the field, maybe not the 400 yard games. I don't know if we even had one to this point, but you have that and that looks great. But the main thing to me when I'm evaluating a quarterback and whether I want him long-term is whether or not he has that killer instinct, whether or not he's going to be able to win the close games because you can look great during the regular season. It doesn't mean a thing if you can't win the playoffs. Take Josh Allen, for example. Um, you can blame certain games on maybe the defense or players around him. But at a point, like he has to get the Bills past a team like the Chiefs or past the Bengals because you're just wasting time otherwise. And I'm not saying they have to go get rid of him because but you got to have a better option too. And I... I think that's more of a, uh, a lot to overcome on that team and kind of a culture of that. And so he's got a really hard task ahead of him in changing it. But that would be kind of an example of that, where it really doesn't matter if he looks great all regular season. Buffalo isn't getting to the conference championship game. So we've got to evaluate that with the Jaguars. If we're looking at 2022, you'd say that Trevor Lawrence was all these things. And that's why we all as fans would come into 2023 saying, this is our guy, we're going to get him extended after the year, no problems at all. But 2023 was a different story, and a story that has some asterisks on it. So I want to talk about that. I feel like Trevor Lawrence was really good when he got to settle in for a while, when he doesn't have injuries lingering. He usually doesn't start strong in a season. We've seen that every year he struggled early on. But once he gets going, performances start to look really good. And you start to see things kind of ramp up wherever they played against Tennessee. Played much better. Uh, Houston, even as well, the one pick was kind of fluky, if you're going to be honest. And this team was 8-3. Was and three. But end of the year, the injuries started piling up, of course, right? But you had the kind of bad performance early on you had good performances as you got through the middle and at the end it just went downhill if you look at if i inverse this you can see kind of the interception totals he had two games to end the season with two picks each and he had a game with three picks against the cleveland browns and if you're watching the games as well you saw some critical plays where he just failed the team, quite frankly, in those moments. It isn't me, it defines him as an NFL player, but we have to call that out. 
you take, for example, against Baltimore, which was really, I think, the final game where they had a chance to say we are a contender, we do belong in this mix, because after that, you played the Bucks, you played the Panthers, and you played the Titans. All games you're supposed to win, although the Bucks, of course, finished out really well this year, and they definitely got things going the right way for them. But you take the Ravens game, I mean, you got Trevor Lawrence just fumbling the ball without content. Or, sorry, without contact at the end of the game. Or end of the first half, I think. You got plays like that. I think the one that stands out to me the most, and the one that just does not sit well with me at all, is Week 18 against the Titans on the final drive. So they get to fourth down. Season's on the line. You can't get the ball back. This is it. You have to convert the fourth down. I mean, we cannot, like, state how critical of a situation it is, right? And what does Trevor Lawrence do? He takes the ball, rolls out, doesn't see anything open, throws it away. And I don't know if maybe people are trying to say, like, oh, well, his arm was hurt, so he just completely missed the throw so bad that it went out of bounds. Maybe that's possible, giving him the absolute benefit of the doubt. But I know my household, everyone watched that play, saw he threw it away. That is not what franchise quarterbacks do. And I'm not saying he's not going to be, right? But I think it's okay to have an opinion that is other than this is the greatest quarterback of all time and this is the biggest bust of all time. And that's that's a lot of what I see from fans, where it's like you say one bad thing, you're dead. If you say really good things, you're just glazing them. And it's not realistic because there's really good things like the 2022 season, like certain moments in this year, there's also incredibly terrible things that you have to evaluate too. And so now we revisit the question of, is this guy someone who has killer instinct that is going to go out and lead this team to the promised land? And I believe he is, but that is not a 100% belief. I think there is legitimately the chance that he just doesn't develop that, that this is the quarterback that we have. It's going to be this wildly inconsistent up and down kind of career. That is very much possible right now, especially with a team that has a lot of question marks. I think the culture hasn't been established well enough to the point where like my main issue is that they just overlook people. They're very like overconfident, very cocky. And every time Jacksonville's been that way, they've gotten their ass beat. We've seen this over the years. It just never ends well. And last year was another example of that. But there's there's all these problems. I think the the big thing to me, if I'm talking about Trevor Lawrence, the big thing to describe my primary issue, and if I could get past this and I didn't see it in him, I would be 100% on board extending him right now. But there's seemingly no sense of urgency on the field. And when there is, he gets crazy and does something bizarre. Or fumbles it on his own without contact. Or whatever it may be. It's like he doesn't always understand what's going on around him. Not necessarily just on the field, but like in the division, in the NFL. I mean, we saw this team collapsing at what? They, there were four losses in a row and they're asking him about it and it's just the same response every week like oh we just got to be better we got to have some urgency they even said at one point late in the year that they felt like they were all waiting for someone to dig them out of the hole and to elevate the team to go like create the spark that's cool but you're the guy you're the quarterback that's your job It doesn't mean no one else has to do it too, but that is your job. You want to get paid 50 plus million dollars a year. You're hinting at that before the year and all these quarterbacks get extended. You got to do your job. You'll earn that money. But there's just things like that where I can't get to that hundred percent where I know for sure that he's the guy. Nevertheless, there are scenarios where you would extend him if you were 95% sure he's the quarterback. 
Now here's why I want. Because we have to evaluate the market. We have to evaluate the players that are hitting it. Are there any players who are going to reset the market? Can we imagine a player who is going to hit over the highest projection in the NFL right now? And so actually really quick, take a look at over the cap. I do want to refresh what the biggest contract is here at quarterback per year. That is it's Joe Burrow, 55 million a year. So you're talking about quarterbacks. They're hitting free agency soon. They hit free agency. Let's say at the same time as when like Trevor Lawrence would, or just before in 2024, you have Kirk cousins. You have Baker Mayfield. Those are the big names. Are either of those names resetting the market? No, they're not. They're going to get paid well. I mean, they deserve to be. They both had really good years while they were playing, in the case of Kirk Cousins. But they're not resetting the market. 2025. Dak Prescott, Jared Goff, guess Jordan Love was one I didn't see before when I was writing down names, but still... As good as Jordan Love was this year, there's still flaws there. Like he's, I don't see him being a guy who's earning over that 55 million a year mark. I think he'll get to like the 50s, like maybe 50 flat, and then it'll stop there. You got Trevor Lawrence himself, which this will change because he will be uh, given the fifth year option this off season. I mean, we're pretty confident in that, and it's not that expensive, so it's very much worth taking. Then you get the other quarterbacks from that class too, right? And a Tua as well, but he's not breaking the market. Zach Wilson, he's not getting extended. Trey Lance, I mean, I mean, I guess these players, they'll be somewhere in the NFL, right? But they're not getting extended, most likely by their teams they're on right now. They're not going to even be in the conversation of resetting the market. Justin Fields is the only one out of that class I respect and think, that could get a good contract because I think he is going to earn it somewhere. I hope he gets in a good situation this next year, whether that's in Chicago or more likely somewhere else. But Justin Fields isn't going to get 55 million a year. This is not going to happen. So all these quarterbacks that we're talking about here are not players who are going to reset the market. Now 2026 is where it changes. Because you got to factor in the rookie draft classes, right? Because like this offseason, starting now actually, all these quarterbacks, including Justin Fields, could be extended theoretically. Now, I include them with 2025 because I think that's the earliest any of them could be. Because for Fields, like he's no one's sold on him yet. As far as an organization, I don't think someone trades for him and extends him immediately because there's no like reason you need to. Because, well... What other players are getting extended like we're talking about? But you have that draft class this offseason. Next offseason, you know who the best quarterback is that was uh, undrafted? Or, or, sorry, was drafted that year? I guess it would be what Brock Purdy, I guess, would be in that conversation. I don't think he's getting $55 million. He could get a lot of money. I don't know if San Francisco extends him immediately. So he's maybe the only one, but it's Kenny Pickett. So the point is, this offseason and next offseason, the market is not getting reset at quarterback. I don't think there's the player out there that ends up earning those marks. The closest one, I think there's two you could try to say on this list. They're Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy. Prescott. I don't think he's hitting $55 million, but the Cowboys could go crazy with it. I think he did actually reset the market when he got his deal after all the franchise tags. And with Brock Purdy, well, the 49ers think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. They might pay him as such. But if you're the Jaguars, I don't think you have to feel like you have to get this done this offseason. Because I don't think he's earned it. I'm not saying he's far off from that. I I think he's close, but I don't think he's there. There's nothing he can do this offseason to change my mind. Go out in 2024 
turn this team around, at least play better as a quarterback, be a better leader, and we will revisit this and he will get extended. But to me, there's just no urgency. There's no need for it right now. Because you're not doing anything except saying, okay, what you did enough was good. So what's good enough is going 9-8 every year and having crucial issues on the team that aren't getting resolved. That's not good enough. But that's what we're saying if we extend them. So that's my take, right? And I want to reiterate. I believe Trevor Lawrence is going to be the franchise quarterback. Don't get that wrong in this video. I believe in him. But it's not 100% that he is the guy who can take you to a Super Bowl. That he has to prove. I don't think he's done enough. I think it's wishful thinking to say that he's done enough by now. If you only look at 22, sure. But 2023 says a lot of things when your team basically did the exact opposite of what they did in 2022. So I think he's going to be the guy. We'll see what happens. He still has to earn it, though. I don't think there's an urgency that needs to be had for an extension. They need to take their time and get this right because you don't want to go sign a $300 million deal with him for six years and then he just does the same thing every year and you're not getting past the hump and you're just stuck here and I think in that too the play isn't good enough because so far play hasn't been good enough 21 touchdowns 14 interceptions that's not a 50 million dollar quarterback you look at the what just the last four weeks seven touchdowns seven interceptions so that's my point right so those are my thoughts on this you guys let me know what you think would you extend him this offseason would you not do you think you're being biased in that or not it's a wishful thinking is it not did i get anything wrong in this all those conversations love to have them with you guys but that's what i've got for you today so thanks for watching thanks for taking your time here and finally go jacks